Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. So on this video there is lots to negotiate about. So Kylian Mbappe has told PSG he will be leaving next summer. So that means he that means this will be his final season now with PSG. And according to the Times, he is interested in playing for Liverpool or Manchester United. He does mention that Manchester City are interested. And also it says that Real Madrid are emerged as the favourites to sign the player. Now Mbappe has been at PSG for a few years. He has scored 77 goals in all competitions. Is PSG's seventh highest goal scorer in their history. Now, PSG did pay £165 million for him. That obviously makes him the second most expensive player in the world behind Neymar and the most expensive teenager ever. At one point, he was on loan with PSG, but then PSG decided to get him permanently. He has got a contract with PSG until 2022. Now at PSG, he's obviously you know, won three Liga 1 titles. He's won a few Coupe, he's won a few Coupe de France um, titles. And he's won Liga 1 Young Player of the Year. Before he was at PSG... He was at Monaco. Um, he was at Monaco for several years. At Monaco, he won the Liga One title, won Liga One Young Player of the Year, and also won the Golden Boy Award in two thousand and seventeen. He made his senior debut for Monaco at the age of sixteen. And Mbappe is now just the age of 21. Obviously, predominantly a forward. You know, his dribbling's very, very good. He's got fantastic pace. Very, very uh, clinical in front of goal. So, do you think if Mbappe come to the Premier League, do you think he would exceed expectations? You know, Liverpool have actually you know, inquired about his availability quite a few times. But yeah, we shall see. So that is the breaking news on him. Now, I just want to give you some news on Benoit Badashiel from Monaco. So according to recent reports, Manchester United are prepared to pay £23 million for Badashiel. He has got a contract with Monaco until 2024. He is a defender and Manchester United are in search for a defender. We've basically seen him as an alternative to Daya Upiamecano from Lesbig because we're looking to sign Upiamecano next summer because that's when he will be cheaper. Um, he'll be available for around £38 million pounds next summer. Um, obviously, if we were to sign up Yamikano in this summer transfer window, it'd probably cost us around £58 million pounds or something like that. So, yeah. We have got a lot of um, centre-halves in our team, haven't we? You know, we've got around seven centre-halves. You know, we've got Harry Maguire. You know, we've got Victor Lindelof. They're our first-choice centre-halves. We've got, obviously, Bay, Tuan Zebe, uh, that are our backup centre-halves. You've obviously you know, got Jones, Small and Rojo. They're other centre-halves we've got, but they're likely to be offloaded in this summer transfer window. So, yeah. So, would you take ben Benoit Badashiel at Manchester United? Now, want to delve into some news on Sergio Reguilon from Real Madrid. I have been talking with you about him on a regular basis. Now, reportedly, Sergio Reguilon has rejected a move to Manchester United. Main explanation is because he prefers to make a return to Sevilla. Now, Sergio Reguilon was on loan with Sevilla last season and played around 38 games in all competitions. 
also played against us in the Europa League semi-final. Uh, Fabrizio Romano, who is a very reliable Italian journalist, he came out uh, yesterday and said that Regilan wants to join Manchester United in this summer transfer window. But we are not willing to meet Real Madrid's asking price. I think Real Madrid have said that they want around €30 million. Euros. That equates to around is it 27 or just over £27 million in pounds sterling. Um, it says that Sevilla are in advanced talks to sign Mar Marcus Acuna from Sporting Lisbon. So, reflects on that, it means that Sergio Reguilon may not be able to go back to Sevilla. But he recently said we have not yet made our decision on Reguilon. Uh, Real Madrid recently said that they want to insert a buyback clause in any deal. And then it said, you know, they will let, they will let him go without any buyback clause in the deal. Fabrizio Romano had recently said that Sergio Reguilon has been offered to Manchester United by Real Madrid. Sergio Reguilon cannot get in Real Madrid's team because obviously Zinedine Zidane prefers Ferlan Mendy and Marcelo ahead of Reguilon. Uh, I heard that Arsenal and Tottenham have also been interested in him. He is predominantly a left back and I said it would be very beneficial if Manchester United could get a left back in. We have got two predominant left backs in the team at the moment, and that's obviously Luke Shaw. He's our first choice left back. But, you know, my element of concern about Luke Shaw is that he's injury prone. Luke Shaw's enjoyed like six years at the club. Uh, we've got Brandon Williams. He's our backup left back. We've obviously got Delore and Timmy Fossil Mensu that can be deployed as left backs. Uh, Regalen's been at Real Madrid for several years. You know, he's been at Real Madrid since like 2005. You know, so he's been around 15 years in total. Uh, he's played in Real Madrid senior squad since 2018. Obviously, like I said, he's had quite a few loan spells. You know, had one with Sevilla, um, had a few loan spells with the Logrones. And he's only the age of 23. Still got a contract with Real Madrid till 2023. So that is the breaking news on Sergio Reguilly. So he's moved now to Manchester United. may not materialise. Now, I want to delve into some news on Jadon Sancho from Borussia Dortmund. So, Manchester United are unwilling to meet Borussia Dortmund's asking price for Sancho. Now, Dortmund's valuation is £108 million. And like I've said, throughout the course of this Jadon Sancho transfer saga... It has been Borussia Dortmund's asking price that has been the stumbling block because we have said several times we are not willing to meet Borussia Dortmund's asking price. Now, don't get me wrong, I think Sancho is a world-class player, but I just don't think he's worth what Dortmund are demanding. I think he's probably worth from between £70 to £80 million pounds at the top. And it recently said that, you know, we're considering now ending our pursuit of Sancho and we are obviously now looking at more alternatives. Now, Gareth Bale is a backup option. Uh, Gareth Bale to Man Manchester United is on, you know, Solskjaer has this belief. Uh, Gareth Bale is available for just £22 million on a permanent deal, but I think we're inquiring about getting him on loan. I think Gareth Bale recently had talks with Zinedine Zidane uh, regarding his future. Now, we've been relentlessly linked with Gareth Bale. I think we've been interested in him since the David Moyes era. You know, Gareth Bale has enjoyed like seven seasons with Real Madrid. He's won a total of 13 major honours. You know, Real Madrid did pay £85 million in him from Tottenham back in 2013. He's still got a contract with Real Madrid until 2022. Uh, Gareth Bale's wages are substantial. It's like £600,000 a week, but Real Madrid said they're willing to pay half of them wages if they can obviously offload him. My only element of concern about Bale is that he is injury prone. You know, that's my only element of concern about Gareth Bale. 
think he's recently recovering from a knee injury. But the good thing is, is that he is Premier League proven because I thought he enjoyed six fantastic years with Tottenham. Um, obviously, when he was a lot younger, he was at Southampton. He is now the age of 31, though, so he is ageing up. He has been training away from the rest of the Real Madrid first team. So that's also a few speculation up. Uh, don't forget, he was very, very close to joining the Chinese Super League because he'd been offered £1 million to play there a week. But obviously, it never materialised. And I think an unnamed Premier League club at one point put an £89 million bid in. But he's a much cheaper solution than Sancho. Uh, we've been looking at Douglas Costa from Juventus. And we've also been looking at Jao Felix from Atletico Madrid. Jadon Sancho to Manchester United is still a possibility. Uh, don't forget, we, we've said that we want to sign him by the time we play Crystal Palace. Jadon Sancho has held several talks with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Sancho has reportedly told Solskjaer that he wants to play for the football club. Now, Mike Phelan, who's our assistant, he recently said that Manchester United could be closing in on a deal for Sancho because Mike Phelan's been following Sancho on his Instagram recently. Now, Fabrizio Romano revealed recently that the agent fees, the personal terms and the contract has been agreed. It's a contract with around 250 grand a week, so that would obviously make Sancho the third highest paid player at Man United. It also said that we'd put a £90 million bid in, with a further £18 million due in performance-related add-ons. And reportedly this will be paid in instalments over the course of the next two to three seasons. But, you know, Jadon Sancho to Manchester United a few weeks ago looked dead in the water because Borussia Dortmund were saying that they are convinced that he will remain loyal to them for at least one more season. Uh, so far, Sancho's endured three years with Borussia Dortmund. Dortmund only paid £8 million in for Man City back in 2017. And he's still got a contract with Dortmund until 2022. Obviously, he said a few weeks ago that we'd abandoned our chase for the player until the summer of 2021. And last month... Uh, Dortmund came out and said that we had until the 10th of August to sign the player and obviously we missed out on the deadline. But last month, uh, don't forget Fabrizio Romano had come out and said that Sancho agreed personal terms with Man United and he said he was set to sign a five-year deal with the club. But just after that got reported, it said that talks had broken down. Uh, also to Christian Fark, he's spoken about the Sancho saga quite a few times. Uh, James Cooper, was it last month, he's spoken about it and he says Man United don't miss out on players that they intend on signing. But Sancho does remain our number one priority target and we have been in for him for like the last three years. And we said a few weeks ago that we will not give up on the signing of the player unless he publicly says that he wants to remain at Borussia Dortmund. But Solskjaer is very, very infuriated with his Sancho saga. He's obviously urged Ed Woodward to sign the player. And he's told Ed Woodward to fix it. Now, we know that Sancho will be our next number seven if he comes in because he'll fulfil full number seven well. And obviously, we've had a lot of good number sevens up and down the generations, but at this present time at the moment, we have got number seven vacant. Uh, Dortmund have let quite a few of their big names go in recent years. You know, don't forget they let Abamyan go, they let Ukran Gundogan go, they let Christian Pulisic go, Mkhitaryan, Sinji Kago at one point, Lewandowski, Usain Dembele, Matt Hummels, you know, they've let all them players go. But I've outlined the reasons why I want us to sign, you know, Jadon Sancho is because... I think he'll exceed expectations in the Premier League. He's also got a good friendship with Rashford and he's predominantly a right winner. And plus he is only at the age of 20. So that is the breaking news on him. I still believe that Jack Grealish from Aston Villa remains on our agenda. Uh, we are still in talks to sign him. Uh, there's a few people that are still convinced that Jack Grealish will leave Aston Villa. Um, could still possibly stay with them, though, for this season. 
Because don't forget, Aston Villa avoided relegation last season. If Villa had got relegated last season, I would have fully assured that Jack Grealish would have left them. He won't go on the cheap if he leaves in this summer transfer window. He'll probably cost us from between £70 to £80 million. Pounds. Uh, this, there's around three weeks left of the summer transfer window. And Manchester United have still got quite a lot to do. Obviously, we've got to try and sign a centre-half. Like I said, we need to get a left-back in. Obviously, we've got to sign Sancho. We've also got to sell players because, quite frankly, there is still Deadwood at Manchester United. Um, obviously, we're looking to get rid of the likes of Lingard, Andres Pereira, Smalling, Rojo, Jones, Delor. Uh, Romero's obviously open to leaving the football club. Romero's obviously not not going to want to stay at Manchester United, you know, as third choice goalkeeper. Don't forget, Dean Henderson has just recently returned for us. But, you know, we sell plays in this summer transfer window will generate money and it will help us with our rebuilding process. Uh, Solskjaer recently revealed that he, is he has been frustrated with Ed Woodward. Main explanation is over the lack of transfer business. And I feel as though that Solskjaer deserves more backing in this summer transfer window. Uh, we've obviously seen you know, how he's turned Manchester United around. Because obviously at the first part of last season, we enjoyed our worst start ever to a Premier League season. And at that point, you know, Solskjaer was very, very close to getting sat as Manchester United manager. But Solskjaer's even publicly come out and admitted that Manchester United have got to spend money in this summer transfer window if we are to compete with the likes of Manchester City and Liverpool. But we've been very critical of the board for several years. Obviously, there's explanations behind it, like I've just mentioned, obviously, because our recruitment policy's been poor for several years. Obviously, the managers that we've had since Ferguson haven't been backed enough by the board as well. Uh, we've made a lot of mistakes in the last seven years as well. You know, a lot of the players we've brought in in the last seven years haven't been the right calibre players for Man United. And we've recruited a good 32, 33 players in since Ferguson's retirement. And we've, you know, like I said, we've overpaid for players in recent years. You know, obviously Woodward has said a few times that he's determined to back Solskjaer. You know, the Glazers have said a few times themselves they are determined to back Solskjaer. And Solskjaer recently gave us an update on our transfer plans. And he says that we still remain active in this transfer market. And he says we are still looking to make new signings. But he said he will be content without any more signings. So maybe Solskjaer is happy with the current squad we have got at the moment. But like I've said, there's still key areas where Manchester United are lacking. But you know, there's there's teams that are doing there's teams that have been doing very, very good recruitment around us, and that is an element of concern. By far, Chelsea have done the best business in this window. You know, they've spent over two hundred odd million pounds on these players that they've brought in. You know, they've brought Ziyech in. They obviously brought him in in February. They've obviously you know they obviously got Werner in from Lesbig. They've got the likes of Ben Chewell in, Kai Havertz, Milan Saar, Thiago Silva, Mendy. Uh, now, obviously, Chelsea are trying to get Declan Rice. You know, Liverpool, they've only made one signing so far. They got to Sigmas. City, they've made a few signings. They got Nathan Ake and Ferran Torres. Uh, Tottenham, they've made some very good signings as well. Uh, you know, they signed Joe Hart on a three. They got Holberg. They got Doherty. They got Kyle Walker Peters. Uh, Arsenal, they signed Gabriel Magalhaes and Willian. You know, Leeds United, you know, they've made some good signings. So that is also an element of concern. Just wait there a second. Sorry about that, I just needed to do my ECG in that. But yeah, you know, so far in this summer transfer window, Manchester United have only made one signing, and that is Donny van der Beek. Uh, by the way, Donny van der Beek made his debut for the football club yesterday in the 1-0 defeat to Aston Villa in pre-season. But Solskjaer's happy with the signing of Donny van der Beek, but obviously he said we need like three more signings. 
after Donny van de Beek. Now, this season is a big test for Solskjaer because obviously, you know, this season is his second full season at the football club. And we obviously need to see improvements this season at Manchester United. He has, I have seen improvements, but we need to see more improvements. I still think there's like certain players that have got to improve. Um, obviously, Solskjaer's got to improve his decision making. You know, there's still aspects of our game that I've got to improve. Uh, you know, we've obviously got to score more goals. Uh, we've got to be better defensively. Uh, we're going to have bigger expectations to exceed this season because if we are to make another two signings in this summer transfer window, I think our expectations this season will be to challenge for the Premier League title. Uh, we haven't marked any title challenge up in the last seven years and we haven't won the Premier League since 2013. Um, another one of the expectations will be to win a trophy because we've not yet won out in terms of silverware under the Oligan and Solskjaer era. And Solskjaer has been at Manchester United now over a year and a half. You know, last season was obviously Solskjaer's first full season at the club. And to be honest, we did quite well, exceeded most of his expectations, obviously got us qualification for the Champions League. And I did say how important Champions League was for our players, attracting players and for the financial structure. We also finished third and we did progress to three semi-finals. We got to the FA Cup semi-final, the Europa League semi-final and the EFL Cup semi-final. But um, we know that Solskjaer has got a goalkeeping decision to make at Manchester United. We know that he put Dean Henderson in goal yesterday. But I think we'll know who's going to be our first choice goalkeeper uh, for when the lineup gets announced for the Crystal Palace game next week. Uh, personally speaking, I think Solskjaer should put Dean Henderson as number one because I think Dean Henderson is now reliable enough to become our number one goalkeeper because I think Dean Henderson's now got that experience behind him because he recently enjoyed two successful loans with Sheffield United. We got Dean Henderson at the age of 14. You know, Dean Henderson's been part of the club for several years. But I think there's quite a few Manchester United fans that are convinced that Solskjaer will stick with David De Gea as number one uh, for at least this season. You know, David De Gea has been our number one goalkeeper for several years. You know, this season is going to be David De Gea's 10th season at Manchester United. Um, I think David, David De Gea has had seven good years out of the nine years he's been at Man United because in the last couple of years, he has been a liability reflecting on the calamitous mistakes he's made. De Gea has won everything domestically at the football club and he has won individual awards reflecting on his good run of performances. You know, he's made a total of 405 appearances for Man United in all competitions. 300 of those appearances have come in the Premier League. We paid just over £18 million pounds from De Gea from Atletico Madrid in, back in 2011. And I said, you know, when De Gea does eventually leave Manchester United, he will go back to Spain. Uh, Solskjaer's already made his decision on Harry Maguire. Um, Harry Maguire will remain Manchester United captain this season. Is that the, the right decision to do? Uh, this season's going to be Harry Maguire's second season at Manchester United. Obviously, you know, last season was his first season at the club. We got Harry Maguire in a deal worth £80 million from Leicester last summer. So as it stands at the moment, second most expensive sign at the club and the most expensive centre half in the world. Um, Harry Maguire was recently given extra time off, by the way, for his arrest in Greece and his court case in Greece. Um, like I've said to you, there's a lot of players um, I would keep at Manchester United and there's quite a few players, I think, that have a foreseeable future at the club. You know, definitely keep Rashford. He's the foreseeable future for Manchester United. You know, Rashford has been part of the club for several years. He's been at the club around 15 years. You know, he's been United players since the age of seven and he's been in our senior squad since 2016 and since then has become an integral part of our team. Uh, Rashford recently been out of an ankle injury. Don't forget he sustained a back injury for us last season and he was out for a few months. Rashford does now play on that left. Definitely keep Anthony Martial. He has been subjected to transfer speculation in the past. 
But I think Martial um, has really, really improved and he's flourishing under Solskjaer's guidance. Last season, he was superb under Solskjaer. Um, I also thought he did very, very well in his debut season under Louis van Gaal era. Martial's enjoyed five years at the club. We got him from Monaco back in 2015 for £36 million. We know now that Martial plays in that number nine. Uh I think Agarlo has done uh, has done quite well since he's come in. You know, we got him on deadline day in January on loan. We got him in as a covered up to Rashford. And don't forget, Agarlo was our top goal scorer in the FA Cup last season. Agarlo is a United fan. Uh, just after lockdown, we extended his uh, loan until January 2021. You know, is a possibility chance we could decide to get him permanently. I think Shanghai Shinu said they wanted around £20 million to let him go permanently. Uh, Mason Greenwood, you know, he was exceptional last season. I think last season was his first full season in the senior squad. He was recently withdrawn from the England squad with Phil Foden by Gareth Southgate. Um, we know now Mason Greenwood's our new number 11. He's the fourth Manchester United player to wear the number 11 shirt. Uh, Brandon Williams, you know, he was superb last season, got a lot of game time under his belt, could possibly become our first choice left back in the next year or two, you know, when he gets a bit more experience behind him. I think definitely Fred has improved under Solskjaer. Uh, Fred's been subjected to transfer speculation recently, uh, but I'd keep Fred. I really, really would. Uh, Fred recently told 442 that he wants to stay at Manchester United because it's that's my desire. And I don't want to leave. You know, he wants to be an essential player and win trophies for the club. You know, Fred's been with us a few years now. Uh, we got him for £52 million pounds from Shakhtar Donetsk back in 2018. Got him in Jose Mourinho's final transfer window. But Fred's found game time difficult since the arrival of Bruno Fernandes. Uh, could find game time even more difficult now that Van der Beek's in. Um, Tom Inway, he's also another player that's flourished under Solskjaer. Last season, he was very, very good. Not so long ago, he signed a five-year deal with Man United. You know, Matic, he's also really, really improved. He got a lot of starts towards the end of last season and it weren't so long ago that Matic signed a three-year deal with the club. You know, and we got Matic in a deal worth £40 million from Chelsea back in 2017. I think this season is going to be Matic's fourth season at Manchester United. So, yeah, keep him. I think we'll keep him anywhere for at least another season. Lindelof, I still think he's got to improve, but I think he will stay at Manchester United at least for another season. Uh, Lindelof's enjoyed like three years at the club. Paid £30 million pounds in from Benfica back in 2017. Bay, despite him being very injury prone, I think he will remain, will remain at Man United at least for another season with Eric Bay. I know he's being subjected to some transfer speculation. We paid £30 million pounds for Eric Bay from Villarreal back in 2016. He was actually Jose Mourinho's first signing at the time we got him in and Mourinho was here. Um, De Gea, we'll, I will keep him for at least another season. Could possibly leave next summer, De Gea. We'd still get more than what we paid for him, though, definitely. Um, obviously, keep Pesaka because I think he's been exceptional for us so far, but did look a bit fatigued towards the end of last season. You know, we've got Anwan Pesaka in a deal worth £50 million from Palace last summer, our first choice right back. We just need to see more attacking intent from him because that's what he's lacking. Uh, obviously, keep Bruno Fernandes. He's the foreseeable future for Man United. Bruno Fernandes has won Premier League Player of the Month three times uh, since he came in. I think we got Bruno Fernandes in a deal worth like £55 million from Sport in Lisbon. And I think he scored like 12 or 13 goals in all competitions for the club since his arrival. Um, obviously, we'll keep Maguire. Uh, James, I read up about James recently, but I heard that, you know, there could be a chance we could loan Daniel James out because he was finding game time very hard towards the end of last season. And Greenwood obviously now plays on that right and Rashford's on that left. And um, there's no room for him. And if, definitely if we sign Sancho, then Daniel James cannot get in the team. But I think we could stand up keeping him for another season at least. We won't get rid of him permanently. That's one thing I know. Matter will keep him for at least another season. I know Matter don't get in the team lot now, but when he does, he does make a fantastic impact. One Matter's enjoyed six years with Man United. Got him from Chelsea for just under £40 million back in 2014. So there you go. 
But I don't know if Solskjaer's a foreseeable future for Man United. You know, I think this season is going to tell the story if he is the right man. But it is a transition period for Man United and it has been a transition period for a while. You know, I don't know if he's the right man. If things are to go wrong this season, then you'll get Man United fans demanding him out of the club. But like I said, you know, Man United haven't really got the structure to keep sacking managers because we're not known as a sacking football club, despite the fact that three managers have been sacked since the Ferguson era. You know, we sacked Moyes, Louis van Gaal and Jose Mourinho and all of that. But give him more time. In the last seven years, we've only won three trophies and that was the FA Cup under van Gaal and the Europa League and the League Cup under Mourinho. And we spent close to the billion pound range on players in the last seven years. But I'm hopeful we can win a title under Solskjaer. If we could do this, it would be our first tro uh, our first title under him and our 21st title overall because as it stands at the moment, we've won 20 titles and 13 of them are Premier League. So we are the most successful team in Premier League history. Um, like I said, Solskjaer has spent over £200 million at Man United since he's come in. He's also brought quite a few academy players into the football club. That's positive news. Uh, that we're bringing more young players in and we've got a lot of good young players coming through at Man United, so there you go. So anyway guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care, God bless and I'll see you all again very, very soon.